welcome to our intro video on 3D Vista Virtual Tour Suite. In the next couple of minutes, I'll take you through the program to show you its basic structure and handling, and most importantly, to give you an idea of the workflow. Creating a virtual tour with 3D Vista Virtual Tour Suite is fairly easy. First, we open 3D Vista Virtual Tour Suite. At this point, it doesn't matter whether you have a panorama ready or only dispose of the individual photos so far, since you can either select a readily stitched panorama to work with, or you can start one step earlier and stitch your photos into a panorama from within 3D Vista Virtual Tool Suite. Ok, so we've opened 3D Vista Virtual Tool Suite, and the first thing that the program does is it leads me through a couple of pop-up windows. Here you decide whether you want to start a new project from scratch, or whether you want to continue working on previous projects. So here on the right hand side, there's a list of all of my projects that I have previously been working on. For the purpose of this intro video, I will start a new project. Next, the program asks you to choose a skin. What is a skin? A skin is basically what your viewers will see on top of your panoramas. So whatever they will use in order to maneuver the tour, such as play buttons, fast forward or zoom, but also info boxes or logos that are fixed on top of the actual virtual tour. You can choose different skins that 3D Vista pre-designed. You can also create your own skin, mixing individual 3D Vista buttons with your own elements. Or you can import external skins that are not from our library, so for example skins that a colleague already created and gave you on a flash drive. Since there is a separate video tutorial on skins, I will keep it simple and choose an empty skin for now. Now the program asks me to import media for my virtual tour. I can create a panorama if I only have the individual photos so far. I can import a panorama. I can create a photo album. Or I can import videos. Don't worry if you want to integrate various types of media in your virtual tour. Let's say some interactive panoramas, a video and a photo album. You can always add these later on. It's easiest to start with the panorama. If you click create panorama, the program will automatically open 3D Vista Stitcher for you to stitch your photos into a panorama and continue right away creating your virtual tour. There is a separate video tutorial on how to use 3D Vista Stitcher and for the sake of this intro we will take a readily stitched panorama and continue. So we click import panorama. Knowing what panoramas I want to import, I now select the respective type, standard, live or adaptive HDR panoramas. I will import a standard panorama now. If you want to find out more about live and adaptive HDR panoramas, we also prepared videos on those. Having clicked on the type of panorama, the program automatically opens a browser window where we should navigate to where we saved our panoramas. Select one of various panoramas, for example five panoramas, one for each room of a house that you want to represent in your virtual tour. However, you can always add more panoramas later on too. There we go! Once your panoramas are imported, you'll find yourself in this mask, which is basically the main mask of the program. On the left you have the typical program controls. You can save your project if you want to continue working on it later. You can duplicate a project, which is a very, very useful tool if you want to offer a virtual tour in two different languages, for example. You can change settings such as the language, or you can opt for help with the program. On the top in the middle, you have the controls referring to your virtual tour projects. The top line are the main tabs, and each main tab has its own specifications or subtabs. The tab on the very left will take you to an overview of all of your projects and your hosting account. You can see a list of the projects that you have previously been working on and that you stored in the program. You can upload these tours to 3D Vista Hosting which allows you to merely copy and send a link to your customers or friends for them to be able to open the virtual tour in the internet. All virtual tour projects that are already uploaded to the internet onto your 3D Vista hosting account show re-upload instead of upload. So if you edit the project here in the program, you can re-upload the version to your hosting account in order to replace the one that is actually online. On the right hand side you can see information about your hosting account, how much space you have left, how many days you have left, and you can renew your hosting account with just one click. Now the rest of these main tabs 
refer exclusively to the project that you are currently working on, so the one that we started together in this video. Again, while the left tab, My Tours, is an overview of all of your projects, the other tabs are settings and production of the virtual tour that you are currently working on. These tabs are divided by media type, so depending on what I want to edit in my tour, I select the respective tab. At the beginning, after our pop-up windows, we always find ourselves in the Publish tab, more specifically in the sub-tab Playlist. Here I can see all of my medias that I have currently integrated in my virtual tour. If I had already integrated photos or videos, these would show here too. Now if I want to start editing my panoramas, I can either double click on the panorama that I want to edit, or click on the tab Panorama. The panorama that we double clicked on is now selected and we can work on it using Panorama's subtabs. For each subtab, you always find specifications and controls on the right in this column. So for any panorama selected on the left, I can change and add functions with these subtabs and their details on the right. Let's have a quick look at some major functions. In the Settings tab, I can change my panorama's name, its export size and quality, as well as rotation speed and zoom speed. In the Start tab, I can adapt the zoom levels allowed. So how much do I allow my viewers to zoom in? and how much do I allow them to zoom out. And if I want my panorama to start looking towards the living room, I move over there in the viewer and click set view as initial point. Then this is the way that the panorama will start when being opened. Now with hotspots, let's say I want to link panorama 1 to panorama 3 in order to allow my users to move from the terrace inside. Therefore I need a hotspot that links these two panoramas. So I select either one of the two panoramas and go to the subtab Hotspots. The first thing to do when creating a hotspot is to select the type or form of the hotspot. Then you place your hotspot in your viewer picture. And you will see further options opening up on the right hand side. For a detailed explanation of hotspots, please watch the corresponding tutorial. I'll make it quick and just add the action to my hotspot for now. Next to polygons, you can also select text or icons as hotspots. Icons even brings an extensive library of hotspots to choose from. You can, however, also import your own icons and place them. Another useful function is the autopilot, which is basically how the panorama would move whenever my viewers do not interact. Of course, the panorama could only rotate steadily in one direction, but there might be specific important points that you want to bring to your audience's attention. So this is the starting point that I've set before, and simply by clicking I add additional waypoints. So the view would automatically move from point 0 to point 1 to point 2 and then to point 3. Just as with hotspots, you can assign actions to these waypoints, so as soon as the view arrives at the waypoint, the program automatically opens an info window, plays audio, or opens a new panorama. Apart from background music that will play throughout the whole tour continuously, I can assign audio to individual panoramas. This could be a particular song, or even directional audio, which allows me to place several audio files in one panorama. Depending on where your audience is currently looking, one or the other audio will play. Remember that this tab refers to placing audio exclusively to this selected panorama. For universal audio, you need to leave the panorama tab and go to publish. In the enhanced subtab, you can enhance the selected panorama by changing contrast, brightness or whatever you wish. You can add effects such as lens flares, which is a natural phenomenon that occurs whenever you point your camera towards a light source. 
Simply click on the spot in your panorama where you want the lens flare to be. And finally I can hide my tripod by placing a tripod cap. You can select the one we offer or import your own one. So these were ways to edit and animate your existing panoramas. But you can always add more panoramas to your virtual tour with this blue button down here. Now we know how to edit the most essential part of a virtual tour, panoramas. But only a combination of interactive panoramas, high resolution photos and significant videos makes a virtual tour truly compelling. In order to add and edit further media types, we move to the respective tab. If we would have added a hotspot that opens a photo album to one of our panoramas, this album would show here and you could edit the individual photos. Since we didn't, there are no photos in our album tab yet. You can add photo albums by clicking Add Album. Select the photos in your browser window and click Open. By clicking on a photo, I enter the editing mask and can change things such as its name, I can add a description, I can change the time it will show before moving on to the next photo in the album, I can change the effects, its size and quality, and I can add audio. Just as with the panoramas, these changes can be made to each photo individually, so simply select the photo that you wish to edit on the left. If we go back to the List sub-tab, we can add more photos to our photo album, or add a separate new photo album. Photos and albums integrated via the Photo Album tab will always be integrated in the playlist. So if we move to the Publish Playlist tab, we can see that after our four panoramas have been played, the photo albums will start playing full screen. The alternative to being a carousel or playlist element would be to add photo albums on demand in the form of a hotspot. This you would do from within the panorama tab though. Now you can find your on demand photo album in the photo album tab for editing purposes, but not in the publish and playlist tab. So it will not play automatically after the four panoramas and the two other photo albums, but only if your audience clicks on the hotspot. With videos, it's basically the same procedures. You add a video here and it becomes part of the playlist. You add a video within the Panoramas tab as a hotspot and it doesn't. Once your videos show in this mask, you can edit them via the sub-tabs. In settings, you can change name, background color, size or quality. In Start, you can show or hide different skin elements for the time that the video plays. In our case, we haven't created a skin yet, so there are no elements to choose from for us. But if there were, they would show on the right and you would simply tick whether you want them to show or not. In Hotspots, you can add interactivity to videos, a completely new feature to which we prepared a separate video tutorial. Now, the tab Skins does not refer to any particular type of media to integrate in your virtual tour, but it is rather a top layer on top of your actual virtual tour, which can contain buttons, info boxes, floor plans and other control elements. You can add entire control panels or individual buttons. In both cases, you can, similar to hotspots, Choose from our extensive libraries or import your own buttons and elements. You can add your own images such as info boxes. For every element you can change behavior, size and position by drag and drop within the viewer or on the right in the control panel. Finally, you can add thumbnail lists to allow your viewers to jump from one media to another. Again, you can import your own thumbnail lists or select from our library and edit design and position afterwards.
Once we are done adding and editing the media and skin for our virtual tour, we go back to the tab Publish. In Playlist you can see the final order of the media playing and via drag and drop you can change it. You can change the project's name and some control modes or add universal background music. In the subtab Loading, you can change the loading screen and place text, an image, or even a video to show while loading the virtual tour. Finally, you can preview the virtual tour in the exact same way that your audience will see it. The virtual tour will open automatically in your browser window. If you notice this preview tour to be jerky, this is due to the screen recording software. Convince yourself of how fluent 3 dvista virtual tours really are by watching our sample tours on www.3dvista.com. Remember that this is the panorama where we placed the autopilot waypoints, so the view moves without me interacting from the door, the starting point, to the paintings, waypoint 1, then to the door, waypoint 2, and finally to the kitchen entrance, which is waypoint 3, and which is also where we set the action of opening the kitchen panorama. If you are happy with your virtual tour, you should publish it. Publishing is the process of producing your virtual tour so that you can upload it to the internet or save it as a local file. There are three ways to publish. For web, to upload the tour to the internet either as a new web page, solely showing the tour, or as part of an existing web page. For example, integrating the tour into the product description page of a house that you're promoting. As standalone player, this format publishes your virtual tour as one file which can be used locally, which means you can pass it on via CD, flash drive or email, and your audience will be able to run the virtual tour without the need for an internet connection. Depending on whether they have a Mac or a Windows computer, they simply double-click on the file and the virtual tour will start running on any computer. There is no need for extra software. The last option is to publish your tour to our 3 Vista hosting service. If you want to upload your virtual tour to the Internet but don't know anything about FTP programs or how to upload which files to what server, you can choose this option and upload your virtual tour to the internet with just one click from within the program. This will give you a link which you can send to customers or integrate into your web page. You can either choose one of the three publishing formats or combine any of the three. Choose or create a folder on your computer where the software will store the files for web as well as for the standalone player. And finally click Publish. That's it, the tour has been created and is now ready to be shown to your clients. If we go to the desktop where I just created my virtual tour folder, we will see the files and folders of the web version as well as the two standalone versions. Thanks for watching.